What is an object? Well, that's a good one because we're doing object-oriented programming, OOP or OOP. So let's take a look at our code. In object-oriented programming, almost everything is an object unless it's part of the language, like a keyword or an operator or an identifier. This identifier holds an object. Or, unless of course it's null, which is the absence of an object. Ooh, let's get rid of that. So here is a number object. There, it's number seven. Cool. And this is a string object. Hello. Oh, <laughs> heck, heck. It's a number object, or sorry, it's a string object. Heck. Uh, this is an object, the, the new Zim container, uh, blah, 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 blah. That is a new container object made from a container class. And we'll take a look at classes in another, what is a class? They're very important. We have many custom classes and all sorts of things we can do with them. And so we'll find out what these things are. But the object I'd like to show you is the object object. And this is an object literal right there. Literal. That is like this. Literal. Object literal. Now these other things were, uh, that's a number literal. And here's the string literal. And we'll see arrays in the future. That's an array literal. And these are faster to write. So you could write a number like this. New number from the number class and pass in seven. But you can see that that's a bit redundant. If we can only, if we, if we get away with passing in seven or just using seven, that would be better. Okay, and this object, the same thing. We could say new object like that, pass in the squigglies. So uh, we don't want to use that. We'll use the shorter one. So let's get rid of these guys. And let's make this object an object of something like an object. So uh, how about a book? So we've got var book. Oh, no, 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 no. Var book is equal to, I was trying to get to that bar. <laughs> var book is equal to there is an empty book, but uh, we'll give it some pages. So we add properties to the object pages 10. It has 10 pages. And here we'll then say, how about a title? A title property of new. So these are properties. They're like adjectives. They help describe the book. When we come to look at custom objects, or objects made from classes, we'll see that there's also ways that we can pass in verbs, or use verbs. So those are called methods. Right, and so we could read the book or make the book do something like that. But for now, we've got these adjectives, and the book is then like a noun. But just note that even though these are adjectives, their values are once again objects. That's a number object, and that's a string object. And indeed, we might even have a case where we're passing in another object here that has certain properties. So the world nests objects, and so do we in coding. This could be an array, for instance, of 1, 5, 9. And what that's saying, we haven't seen arrays quite yet, but that's sort of, maybe these are the important pages that we're dealing with. So these values can be any object. We've got a number right now. Now, if you've done CSS before, it might look a little bit familiar, huh? In CSS, we just use a semicolon there a semicolon here, and this would be our style and our style value. And that separates out those. But we are in coding uh, here in JavaScript, and we use commas. So the general syntax is you've got the squiggly brackets on the outside. Here is your property name, colon, and its value, comma, property name, colon, and its value, and we could continue on, comma, property name, etc. All right. Now in CSS, uh, you don't need quotes around this thing. But here we do need quotes. Now not always. Uh, for instance, if 
we could have a string here, say a or a a a. Okay, and now that would break at the moment because we haven't said what a a a. We haven't told the language what a a a is. So we haven't told it what it is. It better be a string. But if up here we said bar a a a is equal to some number, 666, 666, there we go. So now AAA is equal to 666, so that's like putting 666 there. So now it knows it has 666 pages. Anyway, we don't want 666 pages. We'll, we'll be fine with 10. All right, now how do we access the properties of this object? Well, we can zog book.pages, for instance, and that will tell us how many pages the book has. So we use the dot syntax. Isn't that neat? Now, it, it is actually neat. Look how tidy that is. Oh, you know, how else would you do that? That's probably the easiest way that you would say these pages belong to that book. If we had another book, say book two, those would be the pages of book two, but we're asking for the pages of this book. And so that would zog 10 because that's how many pages we have in there. We can also set, set the property. So we could say book.pages equals 20. Ooh, that's how quickly we can write 200. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Such an author. So now our book has 200 pages. And if we were to zog how many pages are in the book after that, it would say 200. Here's the title, so we can do the same thing there book.title is equal to new old. There we go. Don't know what the book title of new is anyway. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> now there is another way to access the book. It's like this. So if we say, comment that. If we say book at pages, so we use the array access operator book, so the square brackets, and then we use a string in here, pages, equals 300, so now we've got 300. Now it comes in handy to be able to access a property via a string rather than by the identifier, but that's a bit advanced for dynamic targeting, so we'll certainly leave that for later. Now you might wonder why do we use square brackets? Well, I think that's because um, this is very powerful, what we're doing here. It's very common, very basic. What we're saying is this is data, and this is information about the data. Here's some data new. But if we didn't have title there, we wouldn't know what that means. If we didn't have pages here, we wouldn't know what that data means. So we've got data, that's great, but what type of data is it? And similarly, if we don't have the data, we'd have pages, we'd be going, well, okay, how many pages are there? So this pairing is very important. It's the data and the metadata, so data about the data. So information about the data and the data. It's often said a, a key and a value, key and a value. That's what variables are too, and we'll see variables later. That's what is it, and here's what what's in it. <laughs> so that's what type of thing is it, or what, so what we call it, what type of data are we storing? And, and this is the data. All right. So it's not quite tight because that would be like the, that's a container object. But anyway, it's information about what we're storing. So in languages before, before object-oriented programming, this is called an associative array. So it's a list, you see, it's got the comma, just like an array you'll see has a, has a list of commas or a list with commas in it. And in this case, though, it's not just a list of values, it's a list of keys and values. So 10 is associated with pages. New is associated with title, an associative array. So in non-object-oriented programming languages, such as PHP, for instance, this is an associative array and we access the pages key by using the array access operator. You'll see when it comes to arrays, we don't use a quote or a strings there, we use numbers like that. Pardon that when it comes to arrays. <laughs> okay. There we go. So that's objects. Now uh, these 
objects literals that we have here will be quite common in Zim because when we pass in parameters, so here is us passing in some parameters, some numbers. Oh, those are nice ugly numbers, aren't they? Those are four parameters. We have an option that we can do instead of passing in several parameters, we can pass in a single object with the parameter names. So parameters, you have to sort of remember the order. It's like a list without quite knowing which one we need to put there. Well, there's a certain order. It's got to follow a certain order. But when we pass in a, an object, we can, it doesn't matter about the order. We can just say x is this, time is that, but we could say time is this and x is that. So that's uh, a very useful thing for us in Zim, our coding language, because there are many of these classes that have lots of parameters. So we use objects all the time, object literals all the time. And uh, that's why I thought I would take this time with you to talk about object literals. You can see that the syntax isn't very difficult, really. It's just the property name and its value, comma, the property name, colon, its value. And that's what an object literal is, or an object. Ciao from zimjs.com. Have a great day.